After some midweek drama, Manchester United are finally back to winning ways. But they struggled against Villarreal in the Champions League, and next up it's Rafa's resurgent Everton side in the EPL. Make it or break it time for Ole? Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is Footy Talks. With three losses in their previous four games, Man United survived a late scare on Wednesday that would have put their Champions League ambitions in serious jeopardy. Unai Emery's Villarreal bossed the game for the long spells at Old Trafford, with the Red Devils looking flat and disjointed throughout. It took a 95th minute winner from the club legend Cristiano Ronaldo for Man United to walk away with all three points, but the victory couldn't disguise a whole host of problems in Solskjaer's expensively assembled squad. Jadon Sancho was AWOL again and hauled off in the second half. The attack was cut off from the rest of the team in general. Villarreal pressed forward repeatedly against a non-existent midfield, and even Rafael Varane was guilty of sloppiness at the back. After such a dismal showing, Rafa Benitez will be relishing the chance to unleash his revitalized Everton side on Man United on Saturday. Let's hear from Albert with his pick for the game in this week's EPL Minute. That penalty miss put the stamp on Manchester United's first defeat in the Premier League. And I should say this, Aston Villa were phenomenal and deserved all three points at Old Trafford. But speaking of Old Trafford, has the Theatre of Dreams lost its fear factor? Two home losses, zero goals conceded, and incredibly, United haven't kept a clean sheet at home in their last nine games across all competitions. Going back to last season, they conceded more goals than Fulham and Sheffield United. Both of those teams were relegated last season, so tough times at the moment for Manchester United. But up next in the Premier League is Everton and Rafa Benitez. They're playing some good football at the moment. The Toffees are undergoing a Rafa-lution, and players like Andros Townsend are starting to play the best football of their career. And now with the pressure on United to bounce back, this could be a great time for Everton to come away with the result. So here are my picks. Everton double chance at plus 200. So if they win or draw, you get your money. And Andros Townsend to score anytime at plus 550. With Declan Rice cementing his reputation as one of the finest midfielders in the country and with Michaela Antonio now joint top scorer in the league, West Ham continue to flourish under David Moyes. But the Hammers will have their work cut out for them this weekend against newly promoted Brentford side who have already beaten Arsenal and held Liverpool to a draw. Let's hear from James Sharman on the Hollywood storyline behind Brentford's rise to heady heights in the EPL and the data-driven approach that's making the Bees so hard to beat this season. With respect to that doozy on Sunday between Liverpool and Manchester City, today I'm going to choose West Ham versus Brentford as my focus, or more specifically, Brentford, who have been the story of the season so far. You see, the West London club has a fascinating story behind them, especially if you appreciate the work of Brad Pitt. Bear with me on that one, okay? Here's the quick backgrounder. After nine failed playoff attempts, the Bees returned to the top flight this season for the first time in over 70 years. But that's not the story. Back in 2012, lifelong fan Matthew Benham bought the club. Now, Benham made his money in the gambling world, creating Matchbook and Smart Odds. He is a data junkie and asked fans to join him on a journey that would build their club through the use of hard data and analytics. So, kind of like Moneyball the movie, hence the Brad Pitt reference earlier. Okay, now Benham is a very private guy and doesn't like being compared to Billy Bean, of course, but everyone does it anyway because it's working really well. His club, you see, has no academy, simply a B team where he gives all sorts of outcasts a chance. Premier League regulars Neil Mope, Ollie Watkins, and Sai Ben Rama have all been sold by Brentford for a massive profit over the years, and given how well his team's playing, now some of the current team will be set for big clubs very soon. Mathematicians run the club rather than jaded old football geezers. And yeah, Brentford have lost just once this season so far. They've won twice, including against Arsenal in the opener, and they drew Liverpool last week in maybe the match of the season so far. Thomas Frank, the manager, has bought in 100% and his team plays a fun, attacking brand of soccer. So West Ham, who are also one of these stories so far this season, had better be ready for a battle. 
and it may be early, but Brentford are here to stay for a while, and I think they'll grab some points this weekend as well. We're only six games into the season, but last weekend's clash between Chelsea and Manchester City had the feel of an early title decider. Prior to the game, Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea were undefeated against City, but Pep Guardiola's men ran out winners on the day in what amounted to a significant psychological victory as well as a much needed three points. In this week's Fast Money Football, I spoke with Michael Angelani about the potential knock-on effect of a crucial Man City win. Does Pep Guardiola's Man City beating Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea for the very first time change the face of the title race? Jelani, we're going to go to you first. Yeah, you know, this is another match that will definitely come down and mean a lot towards the title contention and title race for sure. I think many people, you know, you see it coming down to teams like Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea, the usual suspects. So Pep getting a win here, I think it not only boosts the confidence of his club, but I think it boosts his own confidence here, you know, in terms of beating Tuchel here and getting a good win. And you know what? That's what, four wins in the first six, you know, including a draw. So City's off to a good start. Uh, We'll say that. And, you know, down the line, we'll see how it plays out. So I think this is a great win for them, for sure. And Michael. Yeah, I I think it really cements, honestly, what I was thinking in terms of this Premier League season and that there's a lot of parity now at the top of the table. And I think if we look at the actual table itself, one point separates first through six, I believe, which is pretty bizarre right now when you're six games into the season already. And I think the race just becomes tighter after a result like that. So I don't know if it changes it, but it does make it more entertaining if you're a casual fan rooting for, I guess, a good, good, good tight race this season. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with both of you. I think it just opens up the title race and it definitely makes everything so much more interesting. Like no one ever, no one never said City wasn't a contender. We always knew it, but this is just like, it just makes everything so much more exciting and way closer in the running. For the second time in a row, we went two out of three in our EPL parlay last week with Villa's first win at Old Trapper in over a decade, denying us a clean sweep of our picks on the day. If you haven't seen it yet, check out our EPL Parlay for this weekend's action on Twitter and TikTok now. Take Brighton to beat Arsenal at plus 200. Take Villa to beat Spurs at plus 230. And take Liverpool to beat City plus 200 for a parlay of plus 2,969. Have a great weekend and thanks for watching Footy Talks. Don't forget to follow at The Parlay on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. And come pay us a visit at theparlay.com.